good morning to you once again. Thank you so much for being with us on Tuesday's edition of Morning at NTV. It's about that time. We step into our Kickstarter. What is stalling Namboli Stadium completion? The fund delay effect on Namboli Works, as well as the mounting pressure and concern over Namboli Works delay, uh, both uh, from the public and private sector. I am Priscilla Regina Naloga. Welcome to our Kickstarter. Now, to just give you a preamble, when you look at last week's events in Parliament, uh, with the parliamentary seating, the speaker Anita Annette Among did task the Minister of uh, Sports to provide accountability for the staggering 97 billion Ugandan shillings that was allocated for the stadium's refurbishment, which unearthed uh, mounting concerns regarding the delayed completion of the Nambule National Stadium. Now, amidst revelations of inadequate renovations, which compelled the Minister of uh, State for Sports, and uh, this is uh, Guang, to respond to including others' <coughs> complaints raised by um, Honorable John Nambesha on the floor of Parliament is the opposition chief whip who did express disappointment over the minister's failure to fulfill the pledges uh, concerning the stadium's construction. And if you remember, a while back last year, this very same minister used three social media platforms, did promise Ugandans that this time round, with that arrangement <coughs> at uh, table, things will work out smoothly and swiftly uh, for the good of sports uh, development in the country. Anyway, the unresolved financial shortfall has also cast the uncertainty of the timeline for completing the renovations, also raising questions about Uganda's readiness to host two World Cup qualifiers against Botswana as well as Algeria. And these are meant to be hosted in June as far as uh, football calendar is concerned. But also we do have the mounting pressure of uh, 2027 uh, in which we are, we want the bid to host AFCON. Our readiness uh, for then is being reflected with what we have at the moment. Anyway, to handle this discussion in detail, ladies and gentlemen, we are definitely joined by Kano Dewakiki, who is the Deputy Defence Public Information Officer with the UPDF. Um, man on ground, he's been in the nitty of this whole process and um, he's going to be giving us his two cents of the account uh, and how the accountability is also moving in that regard. We are also joined by Ismail Dakavachigongo. He's a sports journalist and uh, editor with Nation Media Group and one who's also having keen interest uh, in this particular development. At the end of the day, what is good for the country? But I will allow my guests their salutations. I'll start with you, Mr. Chigong. Uh, maybe because I came first. Uh, good morning, Priscilla, and gr good morning to the viewers. I'm very glad to be here. Okay, all right. Uh, Kano Deo. Good morning, my host and dear viewers. It's nice to be here. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So first of all, we would like to get uh, in detail uh, from Kanoa Kiki. Uh, what is the current status of the refurbishment of the National Stadium in Nabole? Percentage-wise, 87%. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that 87% can be moved very fast to 100%, maybe not to 100%, but to a level where we can host Chan, where we can host uh, the, the Pamoja games and so on. Uh, we are very glad that uh, yesterday we were uh, blessed to host the Right Honourable Speaker of Parliament uh, because this matter was brought to the floor of Parliament uh, about the delays, which I wouldn't really call delays as such, uh, which um, was brought by Engineers Brigade or UPDF now. Uh, for us it was a very big indictment on Engineers Brigade who were almost swinging into action to bring them to book because the statement which was made on the floor of Parliament was should they work something like under substandard. substandard to use the word and that is a term that shouldn't exist anyway in UPDF and uh, so we are happy that the Honorable Speaker of Parliament visited us and she managed to go through the stadium and on record she said the word substandard was wrongly used mm -hmm. she expressed her happiness that uh, actually the work was going on well our uh, Tenets, uh, when it comes to work, are three. It is timeliness, quality work, and value for money. Once we have timeliness, quality work, and value for money met, the rest 
is really something minor. And that's what we are giving Ugandans. The answer was given uh, why the delays, as your question was, uh, because of the delay in releasing resources, uh, which is money. 97 billion was mentioned, yes, but that was not, it's not the money that was actually hitting on our accounts. Mm -hmm. And as you may have seen, the right honorable speaker confirmed yesterday that by yesterday is when the money hit their account, our accounts. And uh, so we are through the processes, I think. We, we had 4,000 workers by today we are adding on to 6,000 workers simply because of that money that has come in. So we have been given two weeks uh, for the Honorable Minister of Sports to, uh, to, to write back, to CAF to come back and do a reinspection of the stadium. Mm -hmm. And uh, fortunately, most of the things were actually on ground. What we, what we needed was the remaining money to have them fixed, to have more uh, workers, especially the, those specialists, to fix them up, and it will not take us long. If you look at the stadium itself, where the, the grass, where uh, the real playing is, it's a done deal, even if you wanted to play today. Everything is set. Uh, the carpet around everything, the material to make it is there. The, the, the carpet, which is called the um, Titan, something like that. Tatan. Tatan, yeah. yeah, the Tatan. It's not the carpet like you get and put Roll. it, no. It, it is actually, uh, installed. So it's liquid. Mm. The carpet is liquid, they just pour it there and that's yeah. all. Everything is there. So it was a matter of uh, waiting for financial releases and we, we completed the stadium. The outside work, what they call landscaping, as uh, you heard from the Honorable Speaker, she was surprised when she entered and the whole uh, ground is flowery and uh, she was excited about it. So the stadium is basically towards uh, the level that can allow us to host some of the games. I'm saying some of the games because Basically, what we are given is to do this stadium to renovate mm -hmm. in two phases, three phases. And we are in phase one, where the 97 billion uh, were allocated. And but so the percentage of uh, works completion that you gave us is per phase one? Is per phase one. Okay. However, we have, because of the coming games to be played in Nambule, we kept picking some of the things from other phases and bring them, bringing them forward. Okay. And I can assure you, uh, because we could not wait too much for this money, some of the things that uh, came in there, we had to find a way as we wait for resources. Uh, when you're doing construction, there are some things, especially when we would have inspectors from CAF, from um, FIFA, they would come and do some other adjustments, mm -hmm. and which would require us to write back, and then we have the money adjusted and so on. We were doing them. As the paperwork goes on, we continue working. Our engineers have never stopped. Mm -hmm. So if you look at all of these factors, surely at 87%, uh, UPDF has done a great job to mm -hmm. see where we are today. And uh, we are proud of it, and we are happy that the misinformation that was there, that the work is substandard, and uh, probably we may not be able to hold some of the matches, uh, is not true. Another factor may be, that I saw is when these guys came, they came with a checklist. This uh, is the CAF team. The CAF team. Yes. They came with a checklist. Mm. So, but because we had some money not yet paid, some of their things on the checklist had not yet been done, but the equipment was on ground. Mm. The equipment which is not on ground is on the ship just a few uh, nautical miles to reach the, 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 the sea, I mean the port, and we offload them and install them. These are like, like uh, I don't know whether they call it the clock also, where everything is, is shown. Mm -hmm. I think in two, three days' time it will be with us. Then some of the things that need direct, directly picked from uh, the manufacturers and from the suppliers, those ones we shall fly them in. It takes just a few, two, three days, they are here, and we fix them and things go on. So I think so far so good. We may not be there at 100%. We are not meant to be there anyway. Mm. We're supposed to be at a certain percentage, 95 or 90 something, to be able to these other 
games that are coming in to take place as we look forward to complete the stadium. Okay. Um, uh, a follow-up question on that, Kano Akiki, is when you as the engineering brigade took on this responsibility, uh, were you aware of the framework within which the footballing fraternity was working to host a Chan Games as well? No, as not at all. Qualifying? Interestingly, not at all. That was not anywhere. <laughs> it was not anywhere. So this stampeding is because uh, so according to your schedule, you are in we, your time. We are in our time, absolutely. Yes. But uh, at a certain point, we were told now that, you know what? We are yes. supposed to you host have to this. Speed it up. Uh, we have to speed up. Mm. So we have tried to move a little bit to catch up with that. And when we looked at the timelines, we thought actually we, we would make it. But now when finances stay... Because also finance was moving at the pace with which the original plan was they, not they, consideration uh, of these they particular did games. They did it. Even actually I would the say that... Uh, I, I would say that finance was also... Uh, stampeded because exactly, now yes. <laughs> so so it was two way yes the finance people had to adjust very quickly mm -hmm. to fit in mm -hmm. we had to adjust in very quickly mm -hmm. to fit. for us we have no problem our 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 rhetoric is always when you ask us yeah. jump we ask you how high should we jump exactly. so we would be anywhere we would have wanted to be as long as the resources were there. Okay. Resources have been availed so far and it begs the question uh, what is the time frame that the brigade is going to be working in? Yes, I know that the speaker has given you two weeks but can yes, it be shorter uh, than two weeks? The resources have delivery? been given today and, and I don't think if the money hit the account yesterday, you know there is paperwork. It can't be accessed uh, right away by our engineers, but I know in a few days' time it will be accessed. So you, the two weeks given to us by the speaker, probably already it is one and, mm. and some days mm. off. But uh, we are going to do our best as usual. We, yeah. we are going to see, uh, because she's asking us to jump, and she has given us how high how we high. should jump. So we shall see if we can jump in two weeks' time. We want to give Ugandans uh, uh, a promise that we shall try to jump that high. If there is anything, the good thing in two weeks' time is when the minister writes mm. to the to CAF to come back and do reinspection. Re so as they plan for getting the, the, the visas and whatever on the plane, we shall be still doing something. and. Uh, we are sure by because most of our timelines uh, hit around 22nd of May to have the closed that phase, that phase. Yes, uh, closed the done and yeah, exactly. at 95 so, percent to yeah, okay. sure. All right. Um, why we bring it up in that regard is the fact that um, we we are looking to how different uh, partisan elements can actually collectively work together and why I particularly asked uh, the colonel if they were aware of the sporting calendar uh, while they were being contracted for this duty to which he has said that they were not initially aware of the sporting calendar which then begs the question to Dakaba here at Chikongo in regards to amalgamation or you keep saying that you know challenges working with the government the ministry and uh, you know the federation in this case also uh, having known, because these are calendars that uh, you have pretty much a year in advance, uh, knowing that these games are going to be hosted and these are the arrangements. And therefore, where is the shortfall in which the UPDF is now on the hot spot uh, for as if not doing work <laughs> to the timeline uh, or that is expected in light of uh, the sporting calendar? Uh, first of all, uh, I like the fact that uh, Kano Akiki has spoken the longest because he's given quite an explanation of where we are and how we got here. And most of it is um, to exonerate the organization that he works for uh, and promise us that they've done as per their timelines. There are things that will bother me uh, from what he said. Uh, the person you see on your television screen right now has been doing most of the communication on behalf of Nambole and that is the State Minister for Sports, uh, Honorable Peter Gwang, who I can happen to call my friend. And I've had very lengthy discussions with him uh, about Nambole on multiple occasions. Mm -hmm. I think all of us who are watching TV this morning have access to a smartphone, have a neighbor who has a smartphone, and have heard or seen the minister uh, from um, maybe around July of last year. You made, when you're making your intro, you spoke about how he's given multiple timelines. 
about when the stadium will be ready uh, for use. And every time he's come to the platform that he prefers X, he has an apology and then requests for an problems. extension. Mm -hmm. And now he's requested another extension. Now perhaps, and I, I've told him repeatedly that maybe there's got to be a time when he retreats and doesn't speak unless the stadium do the talking. Because in the end, the ordinary person who pays their 10 or 15,000 to access the stadium um, is only bothered about the stadium being open. But one of the things that bothers me the most is that when the stadium was uh, first closed, and that is two years ago, 2022, um, I asked these same questions, and perhaps uh, Kanwa Kik, who actually told me is, uh, is my listener <laughs> previously, I asked these same questions about the expertise of the UPDF mm -hmm. in doing some of these projects. Um, because while we might want, and I like the fact that the Ugandan government is moving in the direction where they can use the army, the country I've visited the most in my life is Egypt. And in Egypt, almost every good project you find has been done by the Egyptian yeah, army. Yes. Uh, and this is sport, and everywhere it's in public life. If it's a road and you like it, the next question you ask, who made, who the, made road? the road? They are going to say, it's the Egyptian army. It's not a Chinese contractor or a contract from I don't know where, which part of the world. Sure. And I always felt that the UPDF um, is going to be a very good addition in terms of uh, our public infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Because then, the cost actually with them is going to be cheaper mm. than any other contract I might find, any other private contractor. But my questions two years ago still remain up to today, uh, the expertise, because today, um, while the UPDF has had projects in roads, in schools, in health centers, and have contributed to the Interim International Airport, they may not necessarily have the right expertise. So they still have to outsource and over time acquire the skills because every construction project may require something that is totally different. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that can be done in a period of two years. Yeah, there's got to be a timeline, maybe 10 or 20 years, I would imagine. Uh, the Egyptian army, which was under the command of uh, President Hosni Mubarak for 30 years, must have been very deliberate over a long period of time for well, them to get to a table, expertise, yeah, yes. to get the expertise to do all the kind of projects they were doing. And those are the questions I asked back then. Then two, uh, a, few, a few weeks later, I remember listening to the former president, Moses Magogo, uh, who has the biggest interest perhaps in the stadium being open because the team that he managed, the Uganda Cranes, mm. have not had a game at Nambole since November 2019. It's almost five years since the national team played at the national stadium mm -hmm. and we've been all over the world. If you asked uh, someone who may not be as old as I am, they do not wear the national team play their games. And that's a bare minimum in no, sport. No, they do know where it plays its games um, in Chitende. <laughs> yeah, even Chitende now <laughs> cannot host because there's been a mindset shift to, oh, we'll okay, see Okay, they, play, they played games in, Al, in Morocco, yeah. in Egypt, and everywhere in else Tanzania. in the world, in Cameroon, in Tanzania. It, 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 it's no longer the feel of a home game. And at the time, when uh, Moses Magogo got his chance, I think, to inspect the stadium for the first time, he came out and said the same things that were said last week on the floor of parliament. He spoke about... Uh, how the UPDF need to get someone else. He actually used very uncouth language that borders on when he said shitty football. Mm -hmm. when, he spoke, when speaking about what the UPDF were doing in Namboli. Mm. Um, eventually, I think none of us got preoccupied with what was happening at the time. It hopes that eventually when the Speaker of Parliament, the number three in the country, uh, say something about it on the floor, then all of us catch a cold. Yeah, but these we are acting as if there is a crisis, but these are things that we have known for a period of over two years, exactly. and there should have been something that was done, because these stadium homologations that are done by FIFA and CAF, yeah. the standards where they say the national team A can only play in a stadium of this standard, if, if women anything, under 20, yeah. we should have known all these things. So therefore the front run runner of this whole um, element would have been FUFA? Mm, they would have offered what you would say advice in the end because they do not own the facility. Mm -hmm. The facility is owned by the Minister of Finance 
and carrying the means of education jointly. They are the two parties that own the facility. Mm -hmm. So there is no effort for going to offer experts. After all, they are not even construction engineers themselves. Mm. So in the end, it has to come to whoever they've given the job. Okay. So I, I thought at the start of the construction, maybe what should have happened at the higher clans of society is that you invite FUFA, then um, FUFA have a conversation with their people at CAF who are experts in these things and mm. FIFA. Then these people come and meet the UPDF engineering brigade. And advise. And give advise. An advisory because the things that... As the work the, starts off. The reasons why Nambole cl was closed are in very, very specific. Mm -hmm. And we all remember seeing... I remember seeing that document. The things were very specific. They wanted the media tribune um, where we generally sit... Um, does not does not even qualify to be a kraal yeah uh they wanted things to do with the uh, dressing rooms we fitted with certain amenities i like the dressing rooms that now have been <coughs> fitted and they are to be four in number mm -hmm. um there are things that are basic with uh, where the coaches sit and have their own office within the stadium there are things to do with the vip and the uh, v v vip stand mm -hmm. that has to be security cautious or something um, there are things to do with the screen that uh, Kanwa Kik spoke about, the LED screen. What we had there was a scoreboard, not a screen. Mm. Those are totally different because mm. you must be able to show pictures and those things were supposed to be there. There are things to do with uh, the safety and security of a, st of a stadium uh, where we have is the perimeter securing the entire stadium. There are things to do with uh, where FIFA no longer want a human interface mm -hmm. with people accessing the stadium where you walk in with your ticket swipe it somewhere and then it opens so we can be able to tell the actual number because we're a country where we've had controversies about the number of people who have access a game at Namboli and at that time people were taking the punch mm. um, at the, rightly so but we're a country where you cannot even tell the number of people are accessing Namboli so these are the kind of things that CAF and FIFA were telling us to do and most of these are not extremely hard yeah, but what, one of the things that bothers everyone is about the time that is being taken. Five years is the time that is being taken. In this five years, you do have council uh, or Jack Hall that has also been previewed to all these happenings. One of the things that have come out uh, is the cost of the facility to Ugandan sports. Uh, something that has been mentioned here with um, uh, Dakaba is the fact that in the first big place, or to begin with, the facility that we are having this tug of war about is not even owned by the Federation of uh, Ugandan football in the first place, which in itself is a dire cost to the sport. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, absolutely. And, and there perhaps uh, lies the controversy or even the biggest uh, problem concerning all of this. Uh, ideally, a facility like that should be owned by the regulator of sport in the country, National Council of Sports. And indeed, uh, the Sports Act uh, gave the National Council of Sports powers over ownership, maintenance, and literally vests uh, all sports facilities in this country, what they call public sports facilities in them. Uh, but guess what? Uh, the act itself is also problematic because, and I think it was deliberate, uh, in order to get a significant financial application, or in order for the act to pass very fast, uh, since the, uh, the, 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 the people in parliament were very much interested in it, having, in it passing as fast as possible, they don't define what the public sports facility is. Mm. And that becomes very controversial. Because now that Dakaba mentions, and indeed it's true, the ownership of Nambol is, 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 is it really a public sports facility if it's owned by uh, 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 Minister, Minister of Finance, of Finance. and Ministry of, of, of Education? Uh, uh, and also, I also know, for example, that it has its own board, board yes. uh, that, that runs it. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and now that becomes a bit problematic because if you say, if the actors is trying to give powers to NCS to own, manage, maintain uh, sports facilities, but does not define them, and also the uh, facilities like Nambole, which is perhaps the biggest sports facility that we have uh, uh, that is owned separately and away from them, becomes a bit problematic. And also, you have a number of them in, in Akivu Bozo, this world, which even has its own act. So, it'd be interesting how I know the the regulations are supposed to be made by, by, by the minister in order to uh, streamline uh, that whole ownership thing. But guess what? Even the regulations, even Section 79 of the Act, says that the minister only has powers to make regulations for the maintenance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, th I think it's maintenance and control, something like that. It doesn't necessarily say the minister has powers to make regulations for ownership. Yet the, the Act said ownership, maintenance, and, uh, uh, and management of the sports facility. 
is, is in NCSC. But, but the, uh, the drafting of sec Section 79 is very, very uh, deliberate because it only talks about Minister only has powers to make regulations for the maintenance and management. Mm. So not the ownership. Which uh, he's <laughs> doing. <laughs> he's right. So the no wonder he's the front runner or the yes, first absolutely. of this yeah. uh, refurbishment yeah. of the city. Yeah. And, I, and I believe it was deliberate from the people who drafted the act because I think they knew it would be difficult, for example, to raise a number from how it's owned right now. Okay. And that already is a problem because uh, if Dakaba mentions that uh, uh, the UPDF, was UPDF necessarily the right uh, uh, organization uh, to develop Nambole, mm. uh, especially in light of the fact that we have uh, best practices in the region. There's even a company that has come here already, uh, Suma. Uh, Suma is doing wonderful projects in, uh, in, 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 in Rwanda, in Senegal, uh, with the Dhaka Arena, with the BK Arena, and ETC and Amahoro now. Uh, uh, that basically, from, from a perspective of, uh, because the idea, th th this should be a PPP, it should be uh, encouraging a private player uh, who has more capacity to come in and help develop this. Uh, and, 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 and that becomes a bit controversial because I think the people at NCS or even uh, from where Mr. Magogo stands, he, he must be, he's, 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 he's struggling with it because he knows for him, as far as he's concerned, it should have been a private more... Uh, Resourced, uh, more experienced uh, player to come in and, and uh, like like Suma, for example, to come and help with the development of Nambole. But he he also he also knows that the the law is not his, on, on his side, and he also knows that there's nothing much he can do under the circumstances. And and not taking anything away from 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 UPDF, which, which I think has done some uh, fantastic projects, but perhaps this one needed uh, a player with more okay. capacity. But, but before know, before, I, before I, you I, come yeah, in, yeah. Yeah. before you come in, I, I want to yeah. you know uh, yeah. draw my <laughs> bucket yeah. into yeah. your well a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. deeper uh, yeah. back to this uh, the act yeah. that you were referring to yeah. if the powers uh, in terms of uh, the public sports facilities were to be under for example uh, the FUFA Federation yeah. um, that means that then they would have to meet the costs what what would be the implications so if I think they would throw out the call for uh, call for open a call for bids and, and the, the most suitable player would, would, would uh, uh, whoever wins the bid would be mm -hmm. uh, the one to, uh, to carry out what 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 UPDF is doing right now. Mm -hmm. So I think from a from perspective, that is how uh, Honourable Engineer Babu looks at it. He's and the financial implication uh, financial would be upon who? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I would imagine yeah, if yeah. Uh, this yes. went. Mm. Uh, when government, when Parliament passes the man, the ninety-seven billion yes. to rehabilitate the yes. stadium, then you're going to a bidding process. Then would not even be here because I, I, I then the stadium mm. would take longer yeah, because you're now yeah, bidding yeah, takes. Know, example, yeah, so yes, you're, you're better off assigning UPDF, which is Summa, a government. Summa, for example, mm. for the renovation of Amahoro has taken away. I think it's about one hundred twenty-three million dollars. Million dollars, yeah, and yeah. it's taken three years. Exactly, yeah, it's taken yeah. three years. I think it should be handing over by in July. Or but yeah. of course, this so is not in consideration of the our current situation, yes, being yes. the fact that we uh, want to position ourselves as a sports hub within yeah. um, East Africa, competing with yes, Rwanda, yes. that has so far had ticks in that element, and so there's that also pressure. But but we, but we also know that sometimes uh, what comes cheap uh, is not necessarily cheap. Comes at uh, <coughs> comes at the <laughs> cost of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. So, uh, in defense, uh, yes, yes. We do uh, have the defense first, first of all, uh, uh, I wonder whether uh, whether council still yeah. believes that we don't have the expertise. <laughs> because <laughs> yesterday, the yeah. speak no, of parliament said that this mm. is the work. Mm. The people who came to inspect, other than the things they found, we have not uh, put in place because yet. we are waiting for money. Yes. They didn't say that this one is not done in a uh, uh, manner that uh, reflects the expertise of yes. the institution of the engineers brigade. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the issue of expertise, we have it. You know, UPDF has been doing quite a lot of things in the past, but uh, this Finally. very docket had never been brought out to the public. It the is now, docket. yes, the engineers, mm -hmm. the engineers brigade has been in existence for quite some time and we have been doing quite a lot of work for the army until this time when the president said no, come to education, come to health and do things and uh, we are just coming out. The expertise, yes, it is true we need, uh, everybody uh, experience is, is very, very vital. But I can assure you, you saw the airport. Nobody expected that we are going to come out with such a magnificent... Mm. Uh, kick it uh, flooded the other week. <laughs> no, so flooding is another thing. Let's, yeah. let's talk, because remember, this airport was there, the plan was there. 
there were other technical things that were supposed to have been done by then. Yes. Yeah. And, but uh, in light of the NAM, they had to do something that would be pleasing to our guests. Exactly. To and, and for sure, everybody, leave alone the rains of recent, but everybody appreciated the work at the airport. And uh, I'm happy that uh, the engineer who did uh, the airport has been now been elevated to command all civil works in the country, uh, just mm -hmm. out of appreciation for the work done. So the issue of, uh, yes, I have been... Uh, to Egypt, I think, twice, and uh, uh, th this also calls me to pass on the information that for those who have been thinking that UPDF wants to do everything, mm. actually we are just beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you the truth, yes, we are I just beginning. Mm. Uh, because of the three elements I told you, mm -hmm. people want things done in a timely manner, people want things done qualitative in a quality, uh, they, they want quality work, and people want to see that there is value for money. Yeah. This very renovation of the stadium, we competed with some other people. We, we didn't have a lot of competition because the powers that be saw that our quotations, the money we wanted to renovate this stadium, we are like times three less mm. yeah. the money those other contractors Be had Because us. in other places uh, where renovations are happening, and uh, Ivan spoke about Rwanda, we are talking about 300 billion ah, Uganda shillings. That of Suma. And then Ka, uh, Kasarani in Nairobi, which mm. is also being renovated currently, mm -hmm. is equivalent to about 370 billion Uganda shillings. Of which so also this is in, in light of the so fact that they are using uh, regional standards in pricing to be able to come up with mm -hmm. uh, those yeah. budgets that they did offer. So Never anyway, <laughs> by and large, Uganda is safer with UPDF engineers and other elements that we can use to, 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 to support. And I am very sure the Honorable Magogo today cannot say what he said the first time. Mm. I'm 100 percent sure. Okay. And, uh, uh, and I'm happy that uh, the speaker put that right. Then um, ab about there are some things that uh, uh, Isma talked about. And all of these have been made so far. Yesterday you saw uh, in the inspection, if you followed, we actually swiped to enter. The speaker swiped to enter the, st uh, the stadium. So mm -hmm. the whole stadium is smart. It's a smart stadium that we are going to deliver to Uganda. So I think so far, so good. The expertise uh, council, we, are build, we, we have built it to a, a, a level that is acceptab uh, acceptable, where we have a few uh, areas that we cannot do uh, as per the expertise of now. Outsourcing is a normal practice. You, you outsource for someone to come and do something. Okay. There are even some of the things like uh, I saw uh, during leveling of the, of, of the ground, you have, we had to import. There, there is, I don't know, do I call it a smart tractor or something, which when it is cutting the grass, it measures that everything yeah. is That's at the amazing. same level. We don't have it here. It costs a lot of money. We had to hire it to bring it in, do that, and it will go back at some point until we have the capacity uh, to have our own. And I want to thank the, our, our Supreme Leader, the Commanding Chief, for really giving the go-ahead on each and everything that we have done as UPDF. And uh, we are very sure some of these equipments, we are already getting equipments. We didn't have road units, now we have them, and we are still building that capacity. The Engineers Brigade, in the next five years, we shall be quite far, and we are moving very fast. So we want to assure Ugandans that we are on it, and we are going to, give, to keep following our three uh, elements to make sure we deliver services to the country. All right. Council Ojako, I trust that uh, your question of if the UPDF was the right entity to be contracted. It was the right. Uh, the very right entity. Just one comment. Yeah. We must actually <laughs> remove in our, high, in yeah. our heads this yeah. issue yeah. of, I don't know whether people really follow the boo-boo. Build <laughs> Uganda. Buy Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> buy Uganda. Let's, but also, let's I think develop the, our own the other capacity. mindset that Ugandans Absolutely. have mm. currently we is that when you mention these UPDF, foreign things. Uh, when you mention UPDF, people attach it to security, full stop. Uh, they're not <laughs> Time aware is now. that the UPDF <laughs> has developed into a whole, whole, whole of government. Yes. So that's a whole debate effort. for another day. When we mention UPDF, we go security. When you see them in other elements, ah, government is And perhaps we have some reservations because. The tropical is not very pleasant. There was a, an indoor arena in Makere 
mm. that you guys left unfinished? You host, use it briefly? I don't know what happened. Let, let me tell you. Uh, uh, given, yeah. uh, first of all, given, mm. uh, it was handed to the UPDF yes, to construct absolutely. in time for the World University Netball yes. Championship mm -hmm. in 2015. Mm -hmm. That is six years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether Kanoaki can sit here confidently on television and say we have an arena today. Six years after the event was held, because I remember when um, and uh, I was I was very much involved mm. with that with that event. Mm -hmm. I actually had the chance to visit the U.S. ambassador's residence uh, for the first time and uh, stood for about four hours. We didn't have seats. <laughs> I was learning about a few things to do with cocktails, and then um, we get to the arena. And by the time the event started, because the U.S. netball universal netball team was part of that event, mm -hmm. and the mortar, uh, which the bricks and uh, the fresh cement mm. was not even dry mm. on the day when the tournament started. Uh, Once the tournament ended, the site was abandoned. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> I didn't come with data about that arena, but I can assure you, it is like how you see Nambole. Mm. If they didn't give us more 17 billion yesterday, mm. definitely we would have stopped where we stopped. Okay, so same so it's, problem is it's recurring. The same pro Actually, uh, in terms if of there is the support anything, from the all yes. other entities, uh, if there is anything the that can uh, can store works done by UPDF, is the bureaucracies in accessing resources. How and I'm very sure that uh, our parliament, yeah. our leaders, yeah. have seen this as the only loophole. But there is no work on record yeah. that has been abandoned. We have had these so-called foreign uh, companies coming, somebody will create excuse if there is any, there are some things in Nambule we have done that are not supposed to be done. You know, it comes in, we see around, we say, but how can we fix, can't we do this, can't we do this, and we put it there. Another company will simply keep quiet, a year, two, three, four goes. And they abandoned the project over yes. like a example, one billion or just, a one million. Just behind here, hey. we have the extension for parliament that is still standing. Pillars are just standing uh, because that company, for whatever several, reason, several, several, several projects. We, we were in uh, um, um, our office. My boss is uh, under the EME. Uh, it's called what? Monitoring and evaluation mm -hmm. of our engineers because we do in-house assessment of the works of our engineers. So when my boss does not go, I'm there. So I traversed the projects, especially related to education and health in northern Uganda. I have uh, an example of two districts who have said that we shall never give any contract to any other contract other than <laughs> UPDF. <laughs> Yes, because of that, they showed us projects. This one was started, they abandoned, we even, they even have the audacity not to tell you why they have left. It is you to go to look for them in their offices mm -hmm. in Kampala to know why did you abandon the okay. work. So what the UPDF comes with is time, quality, as well as value for money. Absolutely. And uh, that was confirmed by the speaker yesterday. But Th let's that is go the back to the purpose for which this became a debate altogether. The fact that as a country we are trying to position ourselves on the continent as a hub for sports and international sports to be mm. exact. Now our sportsmen and women have done a good job of marketing us to the rest of the world. Now it's our duty as country to market ourselves uh, to the world. This is one of the windows of opportunity that do exist. Now turning to you Dakaba, um, with the terms and conditions that have been adjusted, um, the money has been released, a speaker says within two weeks uh, delivery should be happening. Of course uh, Kadoa Kiki here has assured us, it, again because of the bureaucracy even those two weeks we are looking at I mean, <laughs> it's a 50 50 we wait to see what transpires with between now and the 25th of uh, april however at the cost of that we still have to look at why are we having this conversation because as a country we were positioning ourselves to host chan Mm. We were also looking to hosting the World Cup qualifiers. And with this uh, pre-inspection, uh, the things that have come out give us uh, the window that we may not be in position to do that. Now, a speaker says that this should be done within two weeks and then uh, minister should write back to CAF, invite the officials to come back and do a real inspection. You're one who has been able to be a part and parcel of this kind of arrangements. Is that possible in any way according to CAF arrangements? Or for CAF, they have to find an alternative. Just in case again delivery deadlines are not met um i'm a very keen listener uh to people who have uh, public jobs and speak in uh, the public domain you'll find me perhaps listening to kano Akik if he was talking about something not related to what i do on a daily basis 
And because of that, one of the people I listen to because they're in, their, in my realm is uh, Moses Magogo. A few weeks ago, I think about a fortnight ago, he was on, his, uh, on the radio station uh, that Fufa ran, and he said for CAF to allow them to host a game locally, they have to get a two-month notice before the games do happen. So for Uganda to be able to host the World Cup qualifiers, uh, the first of which is supposed to be on June 3rd uh, against Botswana, and then a few days later against Algeria, that notice should have gone out on uh, April 2nd because then FIFA notifies CAF. CAF confirms that the stadium actually missed the standards of FIFA and then write to the visiting team confirming where the game is going to be so that they can plan their travel and their hotel, which has to be within, um, if uh, the distance the team has to travel from their hotel to the stadium exceeds an hour, then you have to provide a flight if you're the hosting um, if you're the hosting country, so that would allow Botswana and Algeria to plan to stay at Serena, for example, to make it to the stadium. So if that deadline has passed and for have yet to confirm, then you can almost say that Uganda will not be able to host uh, the World Cup qualifiers in June, but that we await confirmation from FOFA what is going to happen uh, eventually, because I would imagine the next few weeks the coach Paul put us to name his team, then we come here and do a debate about who is in and who is out of the team. Um, for me, the bigger worry may not be the short-term gain because I do not think Uganda is going to qualify for, Af for World Cup 2026. We may not have the team to do that currently and uh, the start has not been very good after that result in, um, in Algeria. That, that may not be the issue. For me, is the kind of timeline we have to deliver an AFCON because Uganda went and bid to host the Africa Cup of Nations in 2027. There are things in that big document that we promise that we'll do. One of them will have stadiums, at least two per country. I know Kenya have started constructing theirs and renovating Kasarani. Tanzania already have one that passes uh, the FIFA rules or CAF rules and are constructing another in Arusha, which should be done um, by the time the next inspection comes, which should be at the end of 2025. <coughs> Uganda has Nambole, and then we've, uh, we've already committed to build a stadium in Hoima. I remember seeing the president, uh, President Museven on television, <coughs> say uh, that he was told, his plan was always that they'll build a stadium in northern Uganda. Mm -hmm. Then the people from football, he actually said these football people came to me and told me that we need Simanyan Airport <laughs> next to the stadium. <laughs> so they convinced him mm. to move the stadium to Hoima, mm. next to the new airport, the Kabalega Airport, which is supposed to open, I think, at some point later this year. Mm. And uh, there's been things that have happened around that stadium. One of them is that the land where the stadium is, is supposed to be constructed was given by a family of an ailing old man who played football for Uganda way back in the 50s. Mm. Uh, and one of his death wishes was to give the land to Fufa to construct a stadium. Then Fufa go there and find 25 acres. When they speak to the people who are supposed to build the stadium, they tell them this is too small. So far, have to acquire another 10 acres to make it 35 acres. When they get to 35, government commits to building a stadium on that land, but say, no, we cannot build a stadium on private land because FUFA is not a government entity. So what happens is that FUFA then have to transfer their land title to government so that government can be secure to invest their money on that land. Now, there's an Afcon that is supposed to come in 2027. We have... Uh, three years to deliver it mm. and probably we have one year for the next inspection from from CAF to say we'll be ready okay. shall be shall we be ready by then the, the answer is out there okay. secondly before even we talk about the the stadium in Hoima the minister of state for sports Peter Guang goes and says there's going to be a stadium in uh, Lira and remember there was a bit of poem people went and launched I think a Turkish company goes there and launches. There is an Akibwa Memorial Stadium, which was actually a presidential pledge on the campaign trail in 2011. Because when he went there, people told him what we want is a sports the facility. The question is, are the toilet facilities also still standing? 
<laughs> that we do not we do not know because the, the previous Akiba Stadium was was taken over by the hospital. Mm. We, are, we are coming to construct For those two stadiums. Those two stadiums. <laughs> okay. Um, on the side are, of council, are you, are you taking uh, contracts by force? <laughs> not by force. He has force. avoided the first Councilor Jacol, let's look at uh, the breach of uh, you know um, agreement between us as a country, the federation, uh, and uh, the commitments that we are supposed to reach to in order to be able to be eligible to host these games. Uh, if this breach is uh, done and dusted, um, what's the way forward? Futuristically speaking, how should people have the consideration that there is an arrangement and each party must meet the end of the bargain to have a fulfillment? Well, if, it's, if, if, if we if fail to meet the, uh, the timelines, then there's a country in the neighborhood which has which, which is uh, finishing a Mahoro Stadium, and do not be shocked if, if, if the rights go to that country. But yeah, so uh, it, it just basically calls and, and speaks to volumes about why we should no longer look at sports as just games. Just Okuzana, uh, what is it in the name Okuzana? The president says Okuzana, <laughs> that's what he calls it. So, uh, and all of this, because uh, ideally, by the time we, we bid for a major tournament like that, you should already have our affairs in order. You should already have uh, at least some three, four good stadiums in place. Trust me, if a country like, and I, and I know the deliberateness of the leader of that country, and I'm sorry for very referring to it, uh, uh, His Excellency Paul Kagame. I'm sure for him, I know the great host Chan very soon, right? Are they, the great, they, they've hosted the host a Chan already in 2016. Host, uh, mm -hmm. Is an under some they've already actually hosted already many of them already. Yeah. I'm sure when it be, when Rwanda bids for AFCON, they'll bid alone as Rwanda because I'm sure they'll have all the amenities, all the infrastructure in place. So it calls for the seriousness of the powers that be as far as taking sports as serious business is concerned, and also just infrastructure is the, the three pillars of sport for now, as far as I'm concerned, in a country like ours are infrastructure, incentives, and investment. Infrastructure should be in place. You, you as government should have it in place, or if it's not in place, encourage the private sector through incentives to invest in sport and set up infrastructure. The likes of Lawrence Mulindo, ITC. And, and what incentives do you have in place for them? Do you have tax exemptions? Do you have rebates for them? Things like those, if you as a government cannot uh, pull it off. So for me, it, it goes beyond us not meeting the timelines of CAF to just us becoming a serious sporting country and putting in place everything that is required to enable our sportsmen thrive, to enable our youth uh, have an opportunity at, at, a, at, a great, at, a, at a good future. And hopefully this will be a learning, uh, a learning point for us going forward. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for how long are we going to stay in the learning phase is another question. Uh, but I know that there were people who wanted to find out of all entities why the UPDF and I trust uh, Kano Kiki did allude to that. He pointed to it that uh, they be they bidded like anyone else. <laughs> and, uh, but he's they, already voting they, that they are the two stadiums that uh, I spoke about. The most affordable I'm, I'm talking that from our country the could point of for. information. I'm informed about it. So. Mm. Uh, you don't need to discuss that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so now, Kano Akiki, in regards to the phases, I know that it's in three phases. The first phase is looking to the short-term intervention, major revamping here and there, the 97 billion cost. You do have the medium term, which is uh, phase two. You're looking at the projection of 80 billion Ugandan shillings. The third and long-term phase is going to be costing about 100 billion Ugandan shillings. But nevertheless, what are the nitty-gritties that are yet to come in the second phase and the third phase and holistically by time frame when are you expected to complete the works of mm. all I, the I think phases? the total amount I don't have the figure is like 280 billion something like that still cheaper if than what Kenya and Rwanda would be spending and th that is now complete mm. that, if this was to be done by Kenya or Rwanda or <laughs> another country by the sumas and the rest it would be much much expensive <laughs> But we are looking at, uh, in these phases, we are looking at very many other th things. I don't remember very well, but somebody was even talking of covering, but because of the weather in this country, uh, it's not going to be done. If you look at Nambole space, it is supposed to have a swimming uh, pool on this side of, uh, of uh, Sports View Hotel. Yeah. 
As you can see, our fence, as we secured the fence, it went and entered the hotel. Actually, we are waiting for that gentleman to give us space and we complete that fencing because his house entered into the land of government. Uh, there is swimming. There are many other things that are supposed to be done uh, in the final phases. Actually, uh, we are supposed to have two stadiums in Nambula, and so it has that capacity. So this is to capacity. say that the plan that was in 1998, uh, mm. by the Chinese, is mm. what you are meant to be completing in 20 Exactly. Mm. They are, all of so those things... 1991 uh, to 1994. Yes, 19, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So all, all of those other things that were not done at that time are supposed to be done. And that's how it stretches up to those three phases. But even in... Uh, and what's the time frame or the timeline within your working? How many months or years? Um, I don't have uh, exactly what the time frame was that time. But even this one, if, you see, if, if we had flown very well in two years' time mm -hmm. or so, we are supposed to have... Uh, completed this. So I have not come with uh, exact timelines from our engineers when the second, third phase are supposed to be completed. I don't want to be on record on that. But quite what I know is quite a short period okay. compared to what other contractors had given. All right. Um, uh, in that regard, if he says that um, expectedly in two years we have 2027 Afghan, if this is happening mm -hmm. on one stadium, and, uh, but but what, what you need to know to is the, the biggest readiness for 2027. Uh, uh, Prisla, uh, hard. The, the, the period of this first phase was the longest. These yeah. other remaining periods are very, very short, actually. Yeah, but you yeah. see, if we are not going to eliminate the bureaucracy, you yourself mentioned, if yeah. we are not going to be having collective effort from the partisan entities, then it's still going to be the same conversation we're going to be having two years from today. But now, but, uh, let's talk about the implications of that on uh, the future that uh, we have to give perspective to. 2027 is around the corner. Um, that we have to we are supposed to host AFCON. Our readiness towards that journey, what does it look like? Uh, um, and perhaps today is because we are focusing on the UPDF and their involvement. If we are going to deliver AFCON, uh, from what uh, Kano Akik is saying, it has to be somehow with the UPDF. While we may not know the numbers of uh, the size of the army, at least we know they are not short of manpower. They are short of manpower because he has no, mentioned um, that they are going the, to have to get another. Let me tell you, we are using on top barracks. of the four thousand to, to today even we complete have, phase one. Today we so. have about four thousand engineers, mm. and in the next one year, our plan is to have six thousand engineers. No, and in the end, you need a lot of artisans. Yeah, and uh, uh, yes, of course, we yeah. involve artisans. The only element that came in, actually, we learned it later. We thought it we would go it alone as UPDF, but okay. when we started mm. work, mm. Uh, we were required to recruit locals. So that's why okay. you saw the people working on landscaping. They are women and now, uh, other Priscilla, people. Priscilla, from the question you that you asked, and I, I, involve, that. Yeah, I, I, involve, I involve the UPDF because in the end, it's about timelines. Yes. Uh, today, you cannot confidently sit here and say we'll be able to deliver AFCON 2027. It might take a minor miracle. Because I I even if you look at uh, the manpower that we need and the skill set is totally a different thing because APDF can work with SUMA, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which now has credibility across Africa with the projects they've done. Um, th there's a lot of projects that government plans to do around the same time. Now, the thing about resources, also, because as we speak, please put into perspective, we would have just finished elections. Exactly. All attention mm -hmm. and resources are going to be diverted towards to elections. the election from next year. Yes. So we, we are supposed to build an arena mm -hmm. in Lugogo, uh, the Kampala Sports Complex, which the minister speaks about, I think, at 3 a.m. and at 9 a.m. Because it talks about like it's going to happen tomorrow. Then at the same time, um, Uganda signed a contract to build the Akibua Stadium in Lira. Uh, at least that unveiling happened already. Uh, there's been people from uh, SUMA and government and Minister of Finance and National Council of Sports that have toured the land that I mentioned in Hoima to have that stadium. Now, for me, it's about resources. In the end, mm -hmm. are we going to be able to divert the entire economy or a portion of the economy to those projects? When, when this government, and it helps that I've lived long enough to be able to see the scars of, um, of living in Uganda, at least I, I can bear those wounds. Growing up, electricity used to go off 
every after one day. If you had electricity on Monday, you don't have it on Tuesday. If you had it during daytime on Tuesday, you don't have it at night. If you have it on Wednesday evening, you don't have it on when, uh, uh, Thursday during day. Now what happened is that government was very deliberate and said this will not happen. Today I can confidently speak that there are many places in this country that do not know load shedding. They do not know about power cuts and that is changed. Now if government, and, and that's the one thing I can mention, maybe some people who live in upcountry areas can also speak about the roads because when you move out of Kampala the roads are very good. Then you get into Kampala and the roads are very bad. Mm -hmm. um, and those are deliberate government policies to connect the rest of the country to Kampala. They are deliberate government policies for us to have a better electricity supply, like we've seen with Bujagali and the expansion of uh, Naruba Dam. And the president says, now, therefore. Now, therefore, we need to have the same kind of attitude exactly. and become deliberate sports. about sports exactly. infrastructure. All right. Uh, Council Jakol, how do we close this? in light of the fact that it looks gloomy and loomy 2027 uh, we have to go through quite a number of yeah. other things to arrive at afcon 2027 our neighbors <coughs> kenya and tanzania by calf standards and fifa standards they are good to go they already have starting places as a country on a national level we don't even have a starting place well, that's, that's a very difficult question. Uh, but, but uh, have you seen the CAF report? I've been looking for it. I failed to find it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll see a copy. I'll exactly this way. Well, for me, it would be quite sad if we lost uh, 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 AFCON 2027. But also for me, it will not be all doom and gloom. Because it will also be a major lesson for us on the a song that the Ismas of Israel have been singing for years on the importance of the US government taking sports seriously, as simple as that. On, 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 on the fact that, that sports is now beyond just a sportsman playing. I, I don't know, it's now a multi-billion dollar industry. It's, it's an industry that can market a country. It's an industry that can... Can uh, unite. Can, can unite. Can unite <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so for me, uh, hopefully we pull it off. Hopefully the EPDO uh, meets the timelines as soon as possible. But if, if we are still struggling in when is Hoima going to start? <laughs> when is, uh, it's a matter you know, of resources. <laughs> resources. Mm. And as far as resources are concerned, what exactly is the resource problem? Because Kano has been mentioned in bureaucracy throughout. Is it a question of the law? Is it a question of certain people in, in, in government offices just sitting back and, and resting on their laurels and just inside to frustrate projects? Mm -hmm. Or is it a question of us, and, and as far as parliament is concerned, I, I know I had the minister talking about direct procurement, did you see? Because I know he, there are about three legal regimes here playing. Uh, PPP Act, of course, I don't know what, under what law EPDF has come in to take over all, all of this, but I <laughs> shall <laughs> 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 close our eyes to that. <laughs> We're going for a different private court on the council. Let's focus on the bigger picture. <laughs> <laughs> there may be a need for reconciliation. Law established. <laughs> <laughs> there may be a need for reconciliation of the PPP Act, mm. the Sports Act, and maybe the PPD Act, and get a bespoke procurement regime going forward for players who are interested in developing sports infrastructure. You know, okay. like avoid all of these bureaucratic pitfalls that you see. So for me, even if we lost the bid, hopefully for the next bid, whichever yeah. it will be, we shall and, be. And it won't be new to Africa. <laughs> uh, was it, uh, was it uh, Cameroon that lost the bid? Uh, yeah, and yeah, they yeah, had to award yes, it exactly, exactly to another country that yeah. was already yeah. uh, prepared for yeah. it. So yeah. it, it, it yeah. won't be new. They'll send it back to Cameroon yeah. if they have to. <laughs> uh, but let me give uh, Kano Akiki the closing remark on this one in a minute. The number one is uh, uh, which law? You, you see the functions of UPDF uh, and uh, the role of UPDF and how UPDF was established under Article 208 and 209 of the Constitution. There is a part that uh, people don't see that the UPDF shall be a productive, a productive force. Mm. And that encompasses all of these things we are doing as a productive force. That's why we have an area of production and welfare, we are having wasako, we are having many things, which in short, in our military jargons, we call operations other than war. Mm. So the law covers us very well, Council. Don't you worry about that uh, from the Constitution. But uh, I want to tell you that uh, one of the things that will see this miracle delivered by the UPDF is not manpower, is not expertise, is resources and these resources must be 
brought out by the powers that be. And I'm very happy that most of the organs of government that touch, this, especially the parliament of Uganda, mm. is on our side. Because if the speaker talks, who else? Mm. So once parliament quickens these things, but I want to also tell you without any fear of contradiction, that one of the things other than bureaucracy is some animal called interests. Yes. Mm. So uh, people must get out of personal interests to national interests. And that's what makes us move, patriotism and nationalism. We do nothing else other than for this country. But we have individuals who have interests. Somebody looks at a company that I can bring in, how much kickback can I get? We don't look at that. And I have to say this candidly, that if we want the sports industry to develop, Okay. Let us, nobody should think of personal interests, okay. not even sports, all Again, other activities, yeah, yes. so that uh, we are able to deliver services to the country. As a country, we started off on a good pace, uh, NAM, uh, the non-aligned movement, sure. really showed us sure. that if uh, as a country we all collectively... Every entity together, in NAM. Every entity in NAM It was a very together, good example. And it moved instantly. Uh, even with limited resources, meanwhile, Absolutely. they looked for the resources. Absolutely. Uh, why not more so for something that can carry this Again, country and, and position exactly <laughs> last but minute budget supplementary <laughs> budget everything yes, was passed and pushed <laughs> for you now you can put a supplementary <laughs> budget and it when, when, the, when the president has an interest no, like then finance electricity will come out and say we are no longer approving supplementary yeah. budgets okay we all need right. to talk to the president yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's been a very tough yeah. conversation yeah. but i trust that uh, every question you had has been answered by these three gentlemen gentlemen we thank you so much for having uh, given us your two cents on this matter. They've definitely opened up our eyes more on uh, the nature of the conversation that we are having. Uh, Nambole Stadium for Innovation, the conclusion of the UPDF says it's within its timelines. Um, of course, there's been the enlightenment of the fact that uh, for them, they were working at renovation and refurbishment. Over FUFA had their arrangements and their fixtures or not, <laughs> they are on course. And that course may stretch them another two years. The other thing that has come out is uh, the bureaucracy system that we have uh, in government that is delaying uh, works and the personal interests uh, that people have in such things that are causing this country to set back. Imagine something that was set up in the 90s, 2024. It's not even completed according to the original plan. That's not a place that we want to be as a country. What is the cost of service delivery? Well, it lies in the hands of your leaders. The Kickstarter comes to a closer now. When we return, Stephen Bida is also on ground. Again, checking out on the traders downtown Kampala. Some shops are closed as of this morning, and they'll tell us why.